This year I got into Rizzo printing quite a bit. I wanted to take up the challenge of turning my renders into something physical and Rizzo was really interesting because you could control the different color passes and how they mix on paper is a very interesting process. It's like a silk screen through a photocopier but for each color you'd have to reprint that new color on top of the other colors. One of my biggest issues through this process was the conversion from an RGB image which is something that's made on a computer or monitor and then converting that into an image that is CMYK or CMY for printing. So I would use this feature in Photoshop that would convert RGB to CMYK called split channels. But my problem with split channels is that it's assuming that you're printing from a regular printer. So when it pulls the K value out of the CMY part, it tends to desaturate the rest of the colors for the print. So that got me interested in making a process in Blender that was just a degree better than that. I wanted to make a node system where you could toggle individual cyan, magenta, or yellow color passes and adjust the exposure or values to them and preview the effect through a preview node in real time. With a compositor node tree, you could also disconnect and connect different passes pretty easily and quickly, meaning that you could combine different color passes or even omit them. Right now you can see that I'm previewing this two color pass right here. I also still have no trees for a three color pass or a four color pass if I wanted to. So the funny thing about this no tree is that it basically mimics the physical process of Rizzo printing. So you have your conversion from RGB to CMYK and then you have it get converted into thermal prints, thermal screen prints or masters as they call it, and then you can then adjust the exposure of those masters to increase the saturation or hue of your Rizzo ink. Recently, Rizzo printers have made physical charts that map out the value of your masters to the actual color that gets printed from the Rizzo ink. After reviewing these charts, I realized that the relationship between the master's value and the Rizzo ink color isn't exactly linear, but almost exponential towards darker values of the master itself. This type of relationship can be emulated through these color ramps and adjusted and calibrated just by sliding the air. Arrows. The node system is flexible enough that you can adjust this if needed. This is the math node setup to convert from RGB to CMYK. They're almost opposites because RGB is an additive process for color of light, so if you combine red, green, and blue together, it makes a white, while as CMYK is for pigment, so if you combine cyan, magenta, and yellow, you're usually left with a black. I then invert the cyan, magenta, and yellow in order to get the negatives needed to make the masters for the Riza print. These file output notes come in handy because they also help you preview if you click the little world icon. K or the key black can also be determined through this conversion. Now that I have the CMYK separated out, I add a color ramp to adjust the exposure for each of the color passes. This is just like in the printer. The idea is if I make the masters darker, then I should allow for more Rizzo ink to be screened to the darker areas. Under the view tab, I can adjust the scale and the location of my preview. It seems that I might have overexposed the cyan, so I need to go back and change this. I can cut the node out and using Node Wrangler, check on the four pass. It looks like the black is also overexposed. What I can do is go to the exposure color ramp and reduce it here with the arrow and you can see that the preview has reduced the amount of black Rizzo ink. I can do the same for the color passes, and it's this constant back and forth to make sure that the mock-up is how I want the colors to be. Let's speed through the demo of this process real quick. A quick way to toggle between the preview of the Rizzo ink and the master is using Node Wrangler and just Control shift click On the far right of the notes is a group of notes called Rizzo Layering. These determine the order of your print for your color passes. So usually yellow goes first, then magenta, then cyan. It goes from light to dark. So as I'm previewing this RGB to CMY conversion, as there's no K-pass, the neutrals and the darker blacks tend to swing more warm. Now let's check on something a little bit more stylized. In this two color pass, I've combined the cyan and magenta color passes together and the yellow is now represented by this floral pink. The preview on the image for the floral pink is a little strong so I need to go back into this black and white color ramp to reduce the exposure. Usually with Rezo printing, two color passes are simpler to print because you run less risk of misalignment and it's easier on the color mixing. So let's say that you wanted to swap out the Rezo color real quick. So here I pulled up reference from stencil.wiki on Rezo colors and I'm going to use the hex code value of this flat gold to test how it'll look in the preview. So I just click that bottom box of the color and then I type in the hex code for flat gold and you'll see that the preview shows that the combination of this flat gold with this floral pink 
makes sort of this hot red. It looks like I accidentally typed in the wrong hex code so I can just go back in and type in the correct one. So this makes a little bit more sense to me in my head since flat gold is a darker hue. It's more of a darker red than the hotter red we saw earlier. It's pretty easy to swap out different hex codes for different Rizzo colors and experiment to see how the preview of the mockup might look like. I learned through Natalie Anderson's book this year that you can set up your files in Photoshop in a certain way to stack how the passes might look on top of each other. So I just wanted to show a comparison of one of the mockups that I made in Blender, one of the mockup renders, and compare it to the photoshopped stacked version. They're pretty much identical. As part of my workflow, I'm still going to use Photoshop to edit and finish my pieces, but I can also double check my values by eye dropping and checking it with a physical chart. I just wanted to reiterate that this doesn't just work with Blender renders, it also works with any type of PNG or JPEG. So I'm going to use another illustration of mine as an example. So I can use Node Wrangler to swap between the different 4 and 3 color passes, and also experiment with swapping with different Rizzo colors to see how that might look. I'm starting to like how this black and cyan combined color pass with this Rizzo Federal blue looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep experimenting with it. If you're working with a printer, make sure that they actually have these Rizzo ink colors available. This preview note becomes super helpful when I'm making micro adjustments like this. Let's say I want to emit a color pass as a design choice. I can do that by quickly disconnecting the nodes and then just rearranging the print order of the cyan with this yellow here. And then you can see how that kind of changes the preview of the mockup. This could lead to some unexpected outcomes that could turn out actually pretty good. What's fun to me about this process is basically how you can experiment with all these different color combinations and passes at the same time. And any progress is kind of saved so you can just toggle between the outputs to see how they look in comparison to each other. It's basically a filter gallery for Rizzo printing. I've also been curious on physical media like coffics and markers and seeing how that translates to a CMY or CMYK color space. It's like neutral colors tend to become more warm. Everything really light as a marker tends to kind of get washed out once it gets translated. Copic markers are interesting to me because they lay flat and bright, and they are also standardized per marker, so that makes them the ideal candidate for this Rizzo translation. If you are interested in the demo or the process, I've included the file available on my Gumroad in the link down below. Let me know in the comments what you think about this process, if you'd use it or not. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, it helps my channel out a lot, and see you guys later.